So here is a power cord which came with a power supply from China. The plug here is marked as 10 amp 250 volt, which okay, that's fair enough. This plug marked as 10 amp 250 volt. Then you look at the wire. Right there, it says 300 slash 300 volt, 3 by 0.5 millimeter square, 0.5 mil cable. I'll cut the plug off, and there's the wires there. You can see the conductors are tiny, so half a mil sounds about right. If you look up a typical chart and what the cross sectional area has to be and stuff like that for these wires, for the current carrying capacity, that is 5 amps max on that size wire. And yet that smarts is 10 amp, and that smarts is 10 amp. So it's a bit of a uh, warning there, you know, if you've got a wire which is marked differently to the plugs on each end of it, this should be going in the bin. Because um, very dangerous if you use that on something which to draws 10 amps because you think you can do it because both ends of the plug so you can um, you might have a really bad day because this will almost melt now additionally I've just done a little resistance check on these wires if I stick it on the phase wire I'm getting 1.2 ohms I've already nulled this out so there's nothing else there that means that you got 1 ohm resistance on the ground wire as well because it's going to be the same well, typically one ohm is the maximum you're allowed to have on a chassis ground on a piece of equipment because uh, otherwise you can't shunt to ground properly and uh, cause circuit breakers trip and fault currents. So one ohm is the maximum you're allowed to have and if the lead itself is one ohm, uh, it ain't going to work right. Well, let's work out how dangerous this actually, uh, this actually is with those values it has in it. So it's 1.2 ohms in the wire and it's got 10 amps rated on the plug, so if you assume it's based on the plug ratings that's 10 amps. So, 10 amps across 1.2 ohms. Well, I don't really need to calculate for this, do I? <laughs> um, that's 12 volts drop. Okay? So, 10 amps, you know, I'll do it for the argument's sake, times 1.2 ohms equals 12 volt drop per conductor. Don't forget, there's two conductors in this cable. It's got to go in and back out. Alright? So, you're going to get 24 volts drop effectively, right, on the cost of the device. The device will see 24 volt drop, um, but it'll only be 12 volts each side on the AC side, okay, relative to the main socket. But 24 volt drop is what the device will see. If it is based on that 12 volt drop of the single conductor, which is, you know, a nice sensible way of doing it. Now, let's work out the power loss. Well, 10 amps times 12 volts equals 120 watts, right? Because you're doing 10 amps, 12 volt drop across the cable, only measuring the cable with 10 amps loading, right? So it's 120 watts on one conductor. Now you've got two conductors, don't forget, going in, back out. Times two. 240 watts is going to be dissipated by this cable. All right? Now 240 watts makes a pretty good heater actually. Um, so that'd be melting fairly rapidly, I'd say. So that's why it's important to make sure when you get these cables, which you're not sure of the quality, Read the writing on the cable, right? Because in this case, that is quite clearly stated. It's not up to standard for 10 amps. 10 amps there, no. 10 amps here, no. So look at those two plugs. You think, oh great, I can take 10 amps. No, it really can't. If you use that for 10 amps, you're going to burn your house down. Don't want to go there. Cut it up, throw it in the bin. Don't just throw it in the bin because someone might rescue it. They think, oh great, I've got a free cable. Cut it up, throw it in the bin. 